Let's be honest. American Horror Stories Dollhouse sucked freaking ass. We open up our story in 1961, Mississippi. Orville Redenbacher apparently started as a doll manufacturer. He interviews a lady for a position in the company, but it turns out he only wants her as a life-size doll. Huh, me too. No, not that kind of doll, like a creepy haunted house kind of prisoner. Yeah, that's what I meant. Right. So if you interview for the position and don't get the job, you get imprisoned in this dude's dollhouse? Oh geez, what happens if you do get the job? Probably the same thing, just with medical and a 401k. Ah, so she's tempt to hire. She is greeted by a group of other kidnapped women who are all posing as dolls themselves. They seem to have just accepted their fate and try to get our main character to accept the situation as well. Apparently, they're all competing in some sicko beauty pageant, and if you lose, you die. How scary. It's like a less extreme version of Saw. <laughs> Diet Saw. Exactly. You know, the true horror story is that your neighbors could be like these guys and you'd never know. Our main character is told she has to pick out an outfit and make up an alter ego. She decides to become Kobe the Clown. Oh gee, it wouldn't be a scary movie without a freaking clown. I hate clowns, man. That is scary. Orville brings his grandson to the dollhouse to play with his dolls. Apparently this whole thing was made just for him. He's a bit too comfortable with the whole situation though. Yeah, what a little weird popcorn baron. Wow, this whole dinner setup sequence feels a lot like America's Next Top Model. Yeah, with the same dire consequences. After one of our doll models gets brutally murdered, we get a scene where the creepy little popcorn baron has a deep moral conversation with Kobe. He tells our main character that he hopes she can be his mom and that he doesn't care what happens to the other dolls. Apparently this whole dollhouse is really just a bunch of tests to see who can be the best mom to the little popcorn baron. And since you can only have one mom, if you fail the the tests you die. Seems reasonable. Seems super out of place to have such a rational conversation under these ridiculous circumstances. Turns out the little guy is homeschooled. That explains so much. If this whole competition is for the little Baron, and he already chose the one he wants as a mom, why are we doing all this again? The show needs to wrap up pretty soon, so we just jump to the part where they all make a plan to escape. Kobe apparently has had telekinetic powers this whole time, and she just now decides to use it to unlock the front door. I bet the other girls who got murdered would sure have appreciated that earlier. They finally get out, but Kobe doesn't want to leave just yet. She decides to make a truly motherly action and go try to save the boy before she runs away. This ultimately wins her the competition and gets her caught. Orville turns Kobe into a giant lifeless doll. Ah, so it is exactly like America's Next Top Model. Just as we come to terms with how this episode will end with a sad outcome, two badass witches come out of nowhere and completely save the day. What? They come in and stop those old geezers dead in their tracks and set them on fire. Really? They never stood a chance against such badassery. Oh, for fuck. But of course, Kobe wants to save the boy as she feels he's innocent in this whole thing and should be given a better life. But he literally participated, witnessed, and condoned the murderous rampage as grandfather went on. You really think that matters? This whole episode was a giant pile of crap when it comes to writing, and you're really going into it that deeply? I guess you're right. The boy did deserve a better life, and we can't blame him for being yet another victim of his psychotic popcorn daddy. True. True.